Okay, I want to start. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the chemical physics session, I would say. Uh, two uh, theoretical uh, uh, talks, one, uh, one experimental talk, we start with this. Uh, we welcome Joram Jensen, and this is the title. <coughs> Good afternoon. Um, בסדר? שומעים? בסדר? טוב. Good afternoon. Um, what I'll describe to you today uh, is an effort that we are currently doing in order to, to see if we can, what we can do actually with, with uh, lasers and molecular junctions. And we are moving in two parallel routes. One, we try to, to analyze processes taking place inside junctions while they conduct. So we are talking about spectroscopy of molecular junctions. And the other is to use light in order to control the conductance properties of, of uh, junctions. And um, today I will show you um, examples, each from, uh, each, uh, one from each route. Before going to the, to the examples, let me just uh, show you the people that are doing this work. On the, uh, in the spectroscopy route, uh, Tamar and Ayelet, and in the control uh, route, Gilad and uh, Nomi. Uh, the rest of the group are also here, and they are doing uh, uh, things that are not uh, directly related to molecular junctions per se. Let's start with, with analysis, the spectroscopy of, of uh, molecular junctions. And um, if, you, if we think about the, the future goal, the far future goal is that maybe, maybe we will be able to do uh, fast time-resolved uh, spectroscopy on processes taking place while, in junctions while they conduct, but we start in a different, with a different uh, type of spectroscopy. The question that we asked ourselves was the following. What is the temperature of a conducting molecular junction? Now, this is a basic uh, uh, question, and then the, the, uh, what I will show you now is, is a basic research, but it has something to do with the, the very critical uh, technological problem. So what you see here on, 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 on the left is the Moore's law, the exponential increase in the number of, of transistors per uh, unit area. And what you see here on the right is what is accompanying this exponential increase, which is a, a, an exponential increase in the heat that is produced inside uh, devices or chips as we uh, shrink the size of uh, uh, um, transistors. So, so right now we are approximately here at the limit of 100 watts per uh, square centimeter, which is roughly the, the, the power uh, density of a small nuclear power. So this is, uh, we are producing a lot of heat in, inside chips, and this is becoming a critical problem because this heat obviously affects the, the, um, the performance and stability of, of, of junctions. So we, we, we are working on, on, on models, and we are specifically interested in molecular junctions, and people have been trying to, to, to measure the effective temperature of, of junctions before us. Here's one example, and there are several of them, but what I'll show you to now is, is one example, and I will show you what are the main drawbacks of all the, the, the work that has been done so far in, in this room. So the, the trick is was, here was the following. It's a single molecule junction. You have an AFM tip that you touch uh, a, a single molecule. You uh, apply a car, uh, voltage between the tip and, and the substrate. This is gold on both sides. There is current flowing through the junction or through the molecule. This current excites vibrational mode, i.e., inserting heat into the, uh, uh, the, the molecule. And the, the, the idea is how do we... Uh, the, the question is, how do we measure the effective temperature? In this case, what they did was the following. They say here, you have a contact, so you have a spring that the, its uh, properties is uh, temperature dependent. So if they, they, they use the appropriate theory, they can relate the length, which is actually the distance that they have to do in order to pull, to detach the molecule from the surface, as a function of temperature. So as the molecule is becoming hotter, you have to, to take the cantilever uh, up a, f uh, a longer distance in order to detach the molecule. And from that, they, they, uh, from the distance that they measure, the distance that they measure, they can actually say what is the effective temperature of the mode that is connecting, the, the, the spring that is connecting the molecule to, to, the, the, to the surface. There are two main uh, drawbacks in, in this uh, uh, work. 
uh, the first thing is that we, we need to assume certain parameters, and this is what you see here. So in order to relate between the distance and the effective temperature of the molecule, you have to know many, many other parameters that are characteristic to, the, to this spring, to this contact, and not necessarily they are known before the experiment. So if they, they don't actually extract these, uh, uh, these parameters during the experiment, and if they have to somehow guess uh, reasonable val values to these parameters in order to see what is the, the real effective temperature. And the other thing is that the, 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 the um, uh, information that we get here is rather limited because what the temperature that we measure is the temperature of this mode here, but obviously there are many vibrational modes in this molecule, and what we would like to see is how these all vibrational modes behave as a function of bias as a current is going through the molecule. So we decided to work in a, in a direct uh, uh, mode in order to uh, see as many as we can vibrational mode and what is happening to them as current is going through the molecule. And also, we don't want to, to, to rely on any other uh, parameters. And the trick was to, to do Raman spectroscopy of molecular junction. And this is something that we, we are doing, actually are still doing, collaboration with, uh, with Ori. And the, the trick is, is the following. Uh, construct some kind of a junction that allows you to, to pass current through molecules, but at the same time allows you to do Raman spectroscopy of the molecules. So the junction that you see here, the molecules that are sitting here are exposed to the, the, the laser light from above. So we see the molecules as we pass current through them. And we can characterize the, the, the conductance of these uh, junctions, and we, we actually can uh, prove, and I'm not showing it here, that the molecules are there. So now when we pass current through the molecules, some of the, the electrons that are tunneling through these molecules tunneling, tunneling inelastically, they excite vibrational mode. As a result, they lose uh, some of the, the energy. And since they, they excite a vibrational mode, we, we should see a change in the anti-Stokes Raman of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Raman spectrum that we are uh, measuring. So let me just, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with Raman spectroscopy, let me just say it in a very, very crude way. The stock signal that you see here is proportional to the all vibrational modes that are there inside the junction. The anti stocks that we measure here is proportional to the excited vibrational mode. So as we pass current through the molecules, we excite vibrational mode, and we should see a change in the anti stocks signal that we are measuring uh, from the junction. And by theory, we can relate the ratio of the anti-Stokes intensity to the Stokes intensity and extract the effective temperature. Now, the Raman spectroscopy allows us to see many modes inside the junction, and as a result, we can actually see what is the effective temperature of different vibrational modes as we pass current through the module. Now, well, I won't go into the details exactly because I want to show you other things as well. If you are really interested, the, the, this was published uh, recently. I just want to, to, to actually jump almost to the, the uh, bottom line. So what you see here is, is the following. Here's the anti-stock signal. So this is the, proportion, the, the, the signal that is proportional to the excited vibrational mode. And this is the stock signal, the overall vibrational mode inside the junction. And, and again, when we extract using that appropriate theory, we extract from the ratio of the, the intensity the effective temperature as a function of bias. So the different lines that you see here are, are to, uh, correspond to the different three modes that you see here. So we can actually see what is happening to the three modes as we pass current through, through the molecule. And what, what, what is important here is we start at a, at, a, at a certain temperature, at zero bias, which is actually the temperature of the junction under the laser beam. And as we apply bias, the temperature of the modes increases. Increase. Now, we have, they have, we can, you can see here fluctuations that we currently don't know what they are. And we still need to, to explain them, but what, for, for now, what is important is that we see a change from here to here, so there is a roughly an uh, increment in of the temperature in the order of 30 to 40 degrees. Now, if we, let me just go back, if you take this molecule, uh, the, the biphenyl molecule that we were using, and in this uh, potential range that uh, uh, we applied, the uh, tunneling is off resonance, okay, so the charge is not located on uh, the molecule as it uh, goes from one side to the other. And theory suggests that for this kind of, of, uh, this kind of process, the off-resonance process, the temperature increment as a function of bias should be in the order of 30 or 40 uh, uh, degrees, and this is indeed what we, what we see. So what the, the results are actually uh, correspond very well to, to, to theoretical uh, estimations. Before concluding this part of the talk, let me just show you one more thing, is that 
Here's the results that I showed you in the previous slide, and here are the same junctions measured with a different wavelength. What you see here is, is a different uh, behavior. So we start at, a, at a, here are two modes. We start at a certain temperature. Initially, there is cooling taking place, and only afterwards, there is heating. And this is uh, happening in the two modes that you see here. Now, we can explain this behavior, and I, I'm not going into the details, by applying a resonance uh, um, Raman effect in order to explain or uh, maybe partially explain what we see here. But this also opens the possibility, and we are not uh, uh, saying that this is not happening, maybe also here, that there could be, there are, could be circumstances when tunneling cooled, cools a vibrational mode of, of, of molecule. And this is something that we need to, to think about uh, in the future when we, uh, uh, we, when we uh, continue to do this uh, uh, research because uh, this kind of, of effect, uh, a molecular Peltier effect, has, was never, has never been uh, observed uh, before. All right, let me start, go to the, the second example, and this is control of molecular junctions. That, that is control of the conductance of molecular junctions. But I, I want to, to, to work about a different kind of, of junctions, and that is uh, quantum point contact. So uh, we are talking about two gold leads connected by a single gold atom. And I'll show you in a sec how we make them. And the, 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 this, uh, uh, the conductance of this structure is, uh, the, uh, quantum of, is uh, characterized by the quantum of conductance. For those of you who are not familiar with this, this gold atom has a resistance of almost 13,000 13, ohms. Okay? Now what is happening when we apply a laser beam on, on, the, uh, on this uh, structure? Now you can think about two, uh, two processes taking place. One is that there is an oscillating field here. Okay, this is how I, I uh, draw the, the oscillating field. And if you take the Hamiltonian that is, uh, need, needs to, to, to uh, uh, in order to calculate the, the, the um, conductance, the Hamiltonian, the voltage, uh, the potential in the Hamiltonians, in addition to the DC voltage that we apply, now we have as a, an oscillating uh, potential. And if you do the mathematics, what you get is this uh, equation here, which actually says the following. It's, it's the dark current, so this is the current without light, as if the voltage is either going up by H omega or going down by H omega, and multiplied by this Basel function to the power of 2. So this is, this is the, the mathematics. This will, be, uh, will become important later on in, in, in my talk. So this is the, 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 uh, the uh, trivial process that is taking place. However, if the metal absorbs the photons, there could be a different kind of situation, okay, which is, uh, uh, can be uh, defined by this uh, behavior here. What is, what is important here is that if the metal is absorbing, what we uh, modify is the Fermi distribution. Let's say that, we, that the, uh, the, just for the simplicity that the uh, light is absorbed only on one side, so we, we, dis we disturb the Fermi distribution on one side, and this is linear with the uh, uh, power of the, the, the light that we are applying. And as a result, we get this behavior that you see here that describes the, the, the process, the hot electrons transport that you see here. And I will come to these two uh, processes uh, shortly. But before that, let's see how people are making uh, quantum uh, uh, point contacts. So what basically what they do, they, they make this some kind of, of a constriction, gold constriction in this case. And they put it on, on, a, on a something which they can bend, and this is the pushing road underneath. So the trick is that you, the movement here, which is in the uh, order of, of microns, because of the, the way this is all uh, uh, designed, is translated to a movement here in the constriction in the order of sub -ounstons. So when the, as, as they push it, simply they break this structure. They break it very, very gently in the sub angstrom resolution. So when they measure the conductance, or the resistance, if you like, through this uh, structure, as it's, there are few and few less, less and less atoms connecting between the, the two, uh, uh, two uh, leads, current, uh, the conductance is going down, and this is what you see here. So the, the Z that you see here is actually the distance of the pushing rod here, and you can see that the conductance is going down, and when there are few atoms connecting between the two, uh, the two leads, you have quantum, quantized conductance, and these are, these are the plateaus that you see here. So this is one experiment, this is two experiments, three experiments, and so on. So you can open it, close it, open it, close it as many times as you like, and get these traces that you see here. 
And then what, what you do is, is simply measure how many times we see a plateau at 2, how many times we see a plateau at 1, G, nil, how many times we see 3, and 4, and so on. And you do an histogram, and this is, you see, this is what you see here. These are the counts that are, uh, are uh, in this uh, uh, plot. Now, the results that we, that the, this structure is not good for our needs for two reasons. One, if we want to do a, a time resolved spectroscopy eventually, we need to do a, a relatively a long integration time, and these structures are not, are not stable. They are not stable because they are suspended, they are sitting on something that they has some drift, and also because they are suspended under a laser beam, the heat dissipation from this structure is not really ideal. So this is not stable enough for our, our needs. So what we devise is a similar structure, it actually looks like this, the trick is that we have a, a difference in the thickness between the two sides, and instead of breaking it mechanically, what we apply is uh, voltages that initially break the structure by electromigration, and then by pulses, and I'm not going into details, you can see the details here, we can actually train the structure to have quantized conductance. So we can actually switch between conductance values as, as we almost, almost deterministically. Just to give you a feeling of how well we can train these structures, the potential, this is the, the red line that you see here, is the potential that we need to apply in order to kick one atom in and out of these structures. And the point, uh, 1.2 uh, uh, volt that we apply, if you translate it to electromigrating force through a, a cross-section of one gold atom, the force that is acting on this structure is 1.5 nanonewton, which is exactly the force that is acting between two gold atoms. So we can actually kick one at a time atoms out and into the, the structure that you see here. What is important here is that look at the time scale. So while here this is the, the structures are stable for only seconds, here they are stable for minutes. And actually they, 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 are, they are stable here for tens of minutes only because we became at a certain point bored with this. So because they are they're actually uh, stable for hours. So we can switch uh, as, uh, as many as we like. And then since we can switch them, we can also break them down to tunneling and then reform them, break them down to tunneling and reform them exactly what the people are doing here, and we get the same histogram that people are uh, showing for, for these gold contacts. So we have really good gold contacts. So the next thing is to, see, to simply apply gold um, laser light on these structures and see what happens. So the results that you see here are all due to one gold contact, okay? So we initially took the, the oops. We initially took this gold contact, we applied the, the, the green light that you see here, and we uh, deliberately okay, modulate the intensity of the laser. This is a very low, low, low frequency. Just to, it's, it's really for, easy for us to see the changes as a function of, of light. And then we take the dark current that you see here, or the dark conductor that you see here. This corresponds to the histogram that you see here. And we take the uh, light, under light uh, distribution that you see here, and this is what you see uh, in the, the next, uh, in the second Gaussian. And we can do this for, for several wavelengths. And what you can see here is that there is a shift in the Gaussian from one to a certain average value, new value. And that the relative change that you see here is uh, wavelength dependent. And so what we need to do now is to explain uh, exactly, if we can say, uh, understand why, why they are wavelength dependent. Actually, we expected them to be wavelength dependent, but we need to, to, to characterize the mechanism that is operating here. So I remind you that there are two possible uh, processes, the, what we call the photoassistant uh, tr uh, transport uh, and the uh, what, hel hot electron, uh, hot electron uh, transport uh, on the other side. So let's, say, let's assume for a second that this is what is happening, the, the photon assistant transport. So we go to, 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 th the, to theory, and someone has done this for us, uh, um, and this has recently uh, been published. And look at the, the, the curves that you see here. So the curves are the, the, describe the change in conductance as a function of photon energy, or uh, if you like, the, uh, the function of, of wavelength, and they are calculated by this, uh, um, by this uh, uh, formula here. The transmittance as a function of energy, you can see them here, okay, and, and, and the change as a function of, of energy, and the Bessel function is, is really easy to, to calculate, and the alpha that you see here is simply the ratio between the oscillating field and the energy of the photons. So for different uh, alpha, alphas, we can calculate different curves. And on this plot, we put our results. So there, there is a distribution here in our results, 
And the, the, uh, the curves, that, the, the result that you see here are from 20 different uh, junctions. And let's, let's, let's talk about a little bit about the distribution. Let's start here. The distribution actually falls quite nicely in the, in the range of, of theory. And, and the, the, the distribution actually results from two contributions. One we saw earlier that there, are, uh, the, the, there is a distribution in our results, uh, even, at, in, uh, in the, uh, uh, under, even without light. And second, there are between different junctions, between different junctions, the effective oscillating potential under the laser beam is different because of plasmonic enhancement of the field inside this constriction. So because these two contributions, are, and, and mainly because of in the, here in the Bessel function, there is a distribution here, which actually is not relevant in the case of, of the, the 1.6 EV because it, it fits quite well to the theory. If you go to the second wavelength, you can see that the highest uh, effect that we measured uh, corresponds to roughly to an alpha which is uh, uh, 1. Now, if you go to, if you translate uh, alpha of 1 for 1.9 EV, this corresponds to an enhancement by plasmons of the electric, electric field by a, a, a factor of one, uh, 100. And if you go to theory and calculate what you expect to see the enhancement of light inside the constriction, the maximum effect that you can get is 100. So the distribution that we see here uh, is, is quite well. What, what is wrong or what is, is, is not trivial here is the effect of the green uh, laser, which fits above the, uh, um, the theoretical expectation which suggests, suggests that maybe what we see here is not photoassisted effect, but something else. In order to, to see if this is indeed what is happening, we look at the, uh, uh, at the following. Let's start with the green light. The green light, as you can see here, the reflectance of green light is, is, is approximately 65, which means that light is absorbed by gold. And as a result, we expect to see the, the, the uh, um, generation of hot carriers inside side, uh, the, um, the uh, metal, which actually, if you, can, if you want to, to, to think, about it, think about it in the following way, here's the Fermi level, so the distribution initially, let's say we are at uh, a zero temperature, so initially we have this, the uh, distribution of the Fermi level, and as a result of the excitation, as I said, the Fermi level is disturbed, and we take a fraction of the, uh, the, uh, uh, of, the function of the Fermi level and push it up, here, uh, uh, H omega up, okay, uh, by, by, by the light. So for this, such an effect, set theta is proportional to the intensity of light, and we expect to see this behavior. So what we see actually in, the, uh, in here is not this process of photoassisted, but if you like more, uh, uh, the process of, of uh, hot generation of, of carriers. Now, for the other two uh, wavelengths, for the other two wavelengths, that there is actually almost no absorption of, of, of light. And here we expect to see the uh, photoassisted behavior, which, and we can see it as, as when we plot the uh, change in conductance as a function of, of power. So there are two junctions here, one with the uh, black circles, one with the open circles. Each one of them was measured with two different wavelengths. And you can see that the, 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 the behavior that, you, that uh, is plotted here is not linear, and this nonlinearity is a result of the uh, Bessel function that is sitting here. And actually, if you, if you, this is something that we are planning to do uh, next. Uh, theory suggests that the first root of the, the first order Bessel function, function is when alpha is 2.4. So if we can use high enough intensity, the, the leveling that you see here initially should go down, and we should see zero current through these structures if this process is what is taking place in these, um, in these um, uh, junctions. So we, we can actually use this uh, plot of, of power, uh, change of, of conductance as a function of power in order to extinguish, uh, distinguish between uh, two, uh, uh, the two processes. And the next step would be to, to go to single molecule junctions. This is what we are uh, planning to do. Right now, we have some initial results based on junctions that I'm not showing you here that are based on several junctions. We can see effect of light and with that we can are now starting to, to analyze and see if we can... Uh, uh, use the same tools that uh, uh, we used before in order to, to uh, um, understand the processes taking place here. But this is something that I will keep for the next uh, talk. Thank you very much.
English, English, English. If I look at the, uh, the data that you presented on temperature as a function of bias voltage, <coughs> and uh, I didn't draw those lines connecting the dots, uh, I think my impression would be that uh, it's uh, random, there's no trend. Uh, in other words, a priori, without knowing any of the physics involved, that would be my impression. My question is, did you do some kind of statistical justification of those results? Is the change significant compared to expected or random variations? I don't know what. No, but you see here the average of 10 junctions. Yeah, but what, what, what is the uh, spread? What is the the, the uh, Actually, the size of the... Uh, um, the size of the, the uh, change in temperature, or the, the error in, in, in the temperature, is roughly 5 uh, degrees. The error is 5. What was the standard distribution amongst the 10 junctions? Among the 10 junctions, this is what, what we see here. So each, on, each point, on each point that you see here, you need to put an error bar of 5K. That's it. 5K. Yes. No, uh, statistically, th th these are good results. First of all, look at the, 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 uh, the on the left. Okay, the, the here, and again, this is the same error, okay? You can actually, it's easy to see here the, the, the heating, okay? And this is the same heating that is going on here, right? the, the same magnitude. Why we see the fluctuation is something that we need to, 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 uh, to understand. But going from here to here, or from here to here, know that all modes end up more or less here. here it's, it's less, uh, less uh, obvious, but uh, here it's much more obvious. All modes end up at the same temperature. Okay. Can you explain, for example, the, the decrease in temperature when you go from about 0.3 to point, uh, at, On the right or on the left? Uh, on the right diagram. Okay. Why, why we see the, 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 the cooling? Uh, the, right, the right diagram of the left branch. Why, why we, we see the, the, the decrease? I have no idea. As I said, we, we have no idea what, what the fluctuations are. Yes. This junction, no. The only thing that I show here, I showed here, was the conductance. Okay. So in the conductance, you go up to one volt, up to two volt from both sides. Yes. Why did you stop the temperature measurements? Oh, the the, the 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 junctions were not stable under the uh, this this what you see here was measured as at at uh, seventy seven. Okay, just to, to, to we, we wanted to see if we, we, if we see any, any behavior in the conductance uh, of, of the... Oh, the Raman, right, but, but, the, uh, but the Raman was conducted at room temperature and the junctions are not stable above 0.5. You cannot do the Raman at 77? Uh, not yet. Uh, it will take us two more months, something like that, three more months. Well, we need to do uh, single molecule junctions, and then, then, then we uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Uh, you should, uh, with the I repeat the question. I need to, to let's go to the, the results. And the power of, uh, the, as a function of power. No, all, all, all the, uh, um, the power, then the power of, of the different wavelengths are, just, are all the same. Yes, uh, I mean, you already, the laser, okay. the laser should have, uh, uh, like this, uh, I think that this way up should be the amplitude of the laser. In, in this formula, the way up should be the amplitude of the laser. This is what here? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, what, what you call the amplitude is the oscillating field inside the junction. Yeah, yeah this is what, what you see here. So, but I'm thinking, how, how, how is the power? Is the power relative to this one? Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> what, 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 okay, I, I think that now I understand it. What, we can translate the, 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 the power of the laser to the oscillating field, but we have no idea how big is the enhancement by the plasmon inside the junction. 
So actually, this is why you see that for each curve, we need to find the right alpha, okay, which actually corresponds to the enhancement that is taking place here in order to fit the curves. Okay, this is why we have the spread in the results here, because we have different alphas. Okay? Okay, let's start your